All right, Alec is going to do the eye test now. Ready? So this is this is actually the characteristic finding of NPC. Not right here, but all right. Now he's going to go up and down, and he can do that fine. Oh, he's pretty good today. He's got a little hesitation when he does that sometimes, which is a characteristic. You're really good today, actually. Day to day, you know, we're typical. Alec works, Harry works, I work. Alec helps with the house, you know, he vacuums, um, does the floors, bathroom, you know, it's all very typical. All right, I'll see five numbers now. I am Alec Christian Kujayan. I work at a place called Menards. I've been there for six years. I am playing basketball and I like playing uh, video games with my dad, even though he beats me almost every time. What a pass to Ben He keeps me busy, I keep him busy. Uh, you know, we play a lot of sports games uh, on the TV. You know, the whole idea is to, you know, spend as much time and quality time as we can with Alec. Oh, did you see that? I didn't I, see that. I didn't see it either. It's the journey started with Haley when she was three and something just didn't seem right to me and I couldn't pinpoint it. We had her tested at the school district and they said she had flying colors, you know, nothing. She starts kindergarten, but I could see differences. She's a little bit slower than the other kids, but not much, you know, everyone's like, oh, she'll get caught up. School nurse and the teachers, they, they suggested that we do some tests on them to see if Kaylee qualifies for any services. And that was an eye opener because they spent the next 30 days doing all these different tests. They dumped this big stack of test results and wanting us to agree to what the plan was. Of course, you know, again, we were shocked went to a school in Northbrook that was for learning differences. So we'd go, oh wow, this is gonna be great. She did well, she made friends. The second or third year there, she had a seizure. So then we were like, okay, medical. I think I went right to our uh, pediatrician and then we go to a neurologist and lots of medicine, stuff wasn't getting better. And they suggested brain surgery for Haley. So we do that because they said it's focal, they map the brain and everything. She went through three surgeries in two weeks. Our doctor, he did some tests. There's some blood tests that he can do for some of the lysosomal storage diseases and they all came back negative. And then, you know, some of his comments were, you know, why do you want to know? Why do you want to pursue? They're all bad. We found a website that has all the lysosomal storage diseases listed. And I went through them and figured out which ones Haley might have and then send that list. After some more tests, she was diagnosed with the Neiman Pick Type C. Neiman Pick Type C in a nutshell is accumulation of cholesterol in a cell. And typically the body, the cell will expel or get rid of the, the cholesterol that's in the cell. And because of the uh, lack of the MPC1 mutation, the cell, the cholesterol gets stuck in the cell until it dies and not recoverable. Now it affects every cell of your body, it affects everywhere. The most important part that it explains where a lot of you know, issues come from is usually the brain. Haley did all PT, OT, and speech in school, but we did PT and OT out of school also. So I'm talking to our therapist, you know, she's been doing this for years, and I'm talking to the moms, and they're like, you have to go see Dr. Cravis. Made an appointment, and then that's where we get somebody that really listens to us. That's great. I'm always writing about three or four grants and a few FDIC. The Kajayans were unhappy with their previous doctor. Um, they brought Haley to see me because they wanted to look at different options of um, helping her and that her epilepsy was out of control and they just wanted a new look on things. And initially it was just about providing better supportive care to Haley than she had had where she was going before. 
Um, but then there was a uh, phase one, two trial of the intrathecal cyclodextrin, the medicine that we give into the spinal fluid. And that was going on at NIH. So the Kajayans took Haley. She didn't meet the inclusion criteria to be in that trial. So they were very devastated about not being in the trial. And, um, but they had connected with some other families and knew that you could get the medication through compassionate use. They asked me if I would do a compassionate use protocol for Haley and by that time also for Alec, who they knew had the mutation even though he wasn't very affected. I thought hard about that because that is a huge amount of work but I realized no other doctors in Chicago were likely to do this for them, and I decided I would take it on. I was gonna do 30 steps of tandem gait on the line here. This is a test of balance. We look for ataxia, which is a very prominent sign in NBC. I get out of treatment every other week, so I get like a spinal tap. Apparently I have a, I have a limb length discrepancy, so like my spine is a little bit curved and, but Dr. Kravis has mastered it. And then she puts in the medicine and then, then we're all done. And then I have to sit in Trey Dahlenberg, which is where you lay back to, for the medicine to get to your brain, to clear all the bad cholesterol. So that's, that's my day. <laughs> Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> You know, when we start with these treatments, it, I think the first one we did was 12 hours, which was because it was a lot of unknowns. So, uh, you know, to, to satisfy the FDA, so we had all these tests that were in there. So we had to do vitals every hour. Uh, I remember the first time we, we went with a suitcase, we had pillows, you know, we didn't know what to expect. I used to make sandwiches for everybody because, you know, we didn't have time to, you know, go anywhere because we're waiting for all these tests. Slowly you learn, you understand about the disease. Now, you know, it's uh, probably, it's less than an hour. So I think the surprising thing to me was that after Alec initially went on the drug, his performance on a whole bunch of things actually improved a little bit. And that was, that was not, I expected, okay, we're, he's pretty functional, we're gonna keep him where he is. But then his cognitive scores on his IQ test actually went up by 10 points, which we didn't really expect. And he's been on the drug for 10 years. So he's, he's actually better than he was just before he started the drug. That, to me, is the most amazing thing, is that we could keep him not only stable, but a little bit better over an entire 10 year period. When we know from the year before he started that he was, his cognitive scores were already coming down. So the disease was already active and ready to, you know, take its toll. So you have to jump through hoops, feel like you don't know your child or people don't believe you. Um, it gets a little frustrating, but you never give up. They are a family that knows no limit to their ability to advocate for their kids because they sought me out and I did this. I mean, it was kind of one of those things that builds up gradually. I'm not sure that anybody else would have gone the route of creating this huge compassionate use program that not only has many patients in it, but also has many sites. It's like running a large clinical trial for 10 years. And I, I'm not sure that would have actually happened if it hadn't been for the Kajayans. It, it might be that no one would be treated with this drug anymore if it hadn't been for them getting me into the field. Thank you for your support. Keep it coming. And your donations. So keep it coming, you know? So keep it coming, as Elvis would say. Over the years, we've learned to rely on people who, and advocates who are uh, more knowledgeable uh, that, that can provide us with guides. And which is why I'm, you know, very, very happy that Notre Dame has the patient advocacy minor. In the patient advocacy minor, we learn about a specific disease and what patients are affected by it, the symptoms, the um, signs, the genetic causes, and some other social problems that the patients face. What we do is we do lots of group-based projects um, to identify unmet needs within the community and design um, programs and plans to be put in place to help mitigate those needs for patients. So it's a great mixture of learning the background of science and also learning about real-life applications to helping people in need just feel it's 
very disheartening that there's so many people who get diagnosed with the disease and they don't have any sort of treatment. No physicians understand them. And I just want to be able to be that person that understands and to be able to spread my compassion and knowledge in the rare disease focus to help other people. Hopefully we're at a point where we're gonna get enough people trained to listen and to get these rare diseases diagnosed earlier. If we would have known, you know, five, six years earlier, our outcome, we would have Haley with us, you know. It's, um, she taught us, you know, she taught us that you can fight and win. Um, we didn't think she would graduate high school. She didn't pass until she was 20 and she was still playing her Special Olympics and everything. And it's because of the treatment and getting it earlier. And, um, you know, I'm sure she's looking down at Alec and oh, she's saying, you got this. I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I think Alec is, um, a vision of hope. What's good? For a rare disease, we're lucky that we have this because there is hope.